Asian men in America are dating more and more white women, but is there a particular type? Because we got the breakdown. Yeah, we got to talk about this Reddit post. It's titled, Any Asian Males Here Who Have Dated a Basic White Girl? This guy goes on to say that he's dated a lot of e-girls who like, you know, K-dramas, K-pop, anime, have a certain e-girl look, but he has failed to attract even though he likes the Becky or Stacy sorority girl archetype. Wow, he's talking about denim shorts, vans, hoodies, leggings, Uggs. I mean, basically uh, he's talking way. about what? Like some version of Olivia Dunn. Obviously, she might be like the apex predator of that archetype. But basically, these are some starter pack memes. These are basic white girl starter packs. These are e-girl starter packs. Oh. So clearly, they are different, right? Right, right. And I think in this video, guys, we want to talk about the different types of white women that we've seen date Asian guys that, and you know, white, these diff, there's different types of people all over the world, but obviously there's a lot of white people in America. So there are different types of white people. When you say white girl or white woman or white female, you do, it would help when you're talking about this kind of things, guys. And, and you know, you, you, if you're an Asian guy, you want to be smart. You got to be specific here. Right. I think that sometimes, I don't know if it's because we're second gen immigrant minorities or something like that. We, we could oversimplify it. It, there's categories. For example, Andrew, there's the country humble white. Could even be like tech girl white. I got a photo up here as well as what Jillian JJ says, who is a Mandarin expert. Yeah, and I would throw a girl like Jodie Foster in here. I've gone out with a Jodie Foster type white girl before. Dude, a Jodie <laughs> Foster, the, the archaeologist, yeah. like paleontologist. Yeah. Yes, they have degrees. They have college degrees, possibly grad degrees. Have, know how to scope out a bone or two. Um, then we've got <laughs> oh, your, a bone. You've got a typical Korea boo over right. here. So the Korea boos to me, I feel like they're really typified by almost doing their makeup in an Asian style that might look jarring juxtaposed on a more of a white face, mm. but they do it anyway because they love it. Yeah, I mean, famous ones, we got ST Peach. She's with a seemingly I, regular looking Korean guy. I wouldn't call her like a hardcore one though. No, she's not a hardcore. Light. I mean, listen, everybody's a mix, but then you have Amarath, who's definitely in between your e-girl slash Korea boo, which we're going to talk about. Next version is an e-girl, David. And Th this These is, are the 10 out of 10s, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the e-girl look that you see in this thumbnail, this is not like a typical look. Like most girls don't, dress like this all the time, but they might do that when they're going to a, an event, maybe they're streaming, you know, like this is their going out look. But let's well, this, just say- this, this, These girls are on their Pinterest board, but they may never achieve the 10 out of 10 version. Yeah. They might be like a six or a seven yeah, out of 10. Yeah, and you would say typically your girls are more into anime. They've grown up using anime. Uh, I mean, watching anime, sorry, consuming it. Uh, they're in the K-dramas, K-pop, you know, like very, uh, yeah, just like they would fit in a Japanese game show. Right. I, I, the e-girl is a relatively new archetype. I'd say, like, for sure it didn't pop up until, what, like, six, seven years ago? But, David, this next archetype is the one that the original poster was referring to, which we got the kind of University of Arizona sorority girl, basically usually blonde or dirty blonde, white girls, slightly tan skin, and the only girl that I know in media that has dated an Asian guy seriously is Abby Rao dating Rice Gum. Abby Rao is from Louisiana. She got that blonde sorority look. Right. She got that baddie look. I, I want to say Tim Gum. Chung's girl too. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, but I would say that that to me is a very Scottsdale, Arizona look. Like yes. you said, like uh, University of Texas or something like, like that. Like they're not trying to hear you speak your, your mother tongue that much like they know you're asian but they're like okay our life is not asian like don't make me all asian but like yes you're asian that's fine uh we got the bookish brunette mm. i feel like this in new york city is the most common pairing i see with the asian guys though still could be good looking oh yeah but still could be cute but bookish brunette yeah, bookish they have uh brunette hair often tied back maybe it's not the longest brunette hair and certainly not that curly uh they might live in brooklyn they definitely have mm -hmm. books around the house and plants travel to a lot of countries got a lot of stamps in their passport yeah they're open-minded cool to hang with yeah maybe I've, took I've, a look could, took a look at, at doing uh teach for america yeah. thought about it i've uh, maybe they have a grandparent that speaks another language Right. Oh, that's a good point. Um, the Eastern European look. Right. So uh, obviously we know the trend. A lot of Chinese men from China, like Chinese nationals, are marrying Russian and Ukrainian women. But besides the fact we're going to pop up some of those photos, these are overseas photos. But I do know a number of Asian American men who have actually married Russian and Ukrainian women, uh, whether they were on a trip there, they met them or they met them in America studying or whatever it was. I, I know some other Asian American. Polish. Women. 
Yes. Polish. Uh, Hungary. Hungarian. Um, yeah. yeah, you could name them. Guys, it, it works. They're more open. They're also closer to Asia. Like, I feel like women who are from those countries, or at least were born in those countries, they don't really have anything against Asian culture because they always knew Asian culture, whether from a long time ago from the Mongolian horde, but that's ancient times. Or most recently, like they're just closer to Asia. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think they have a lot of like Central Asians as immigrants in their countries too. Right. And then also I just threw in as a bonus the edgy tattooed uh, white girl who is known to date different ethnicities of guys. For example, this model, Adam Poo, who's like, Cambodian, he could probably date a lot of like these tattoo white girls. Right. Um, anyway, here are some other photos from this thread where guys were posting themselves with their Asian girlfriends. Boom, 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 boom mm. here. And um, I just, we just came up with this list and I'm not the expert on this topic, but I think that we're an expert at just asking the right questions. Right. So what are some, here are seven things you need to understand when it comes to dating white women or white people in America. Or, or just things you should probably just know about white people in general. Uh, point number one, there are a lot of different types of white people. I know that people just like to say blanket statements on the internet to sound like to get a lot of ups on Instagram, but white people are actually hyper diverse. There's about 12 different major European bloodlines in America, Andrew. American, English, German, French, Irish, Italian, Norwegian, Polish, Portuguese, Scottish, Finnish, Dutch. Those are just the major ones. There's other ones from Scandinavia and things like that. Oh, you wanna know how there's different types of white people? You should get around a certain just singular group of a white person and then talk about other types of white people around them. And they got things to say. And especially on the East Coast, I met a guy who seemingly was white, but I guess he was half Italian and it made sense because he was talking down on German people. And well, he was joking about it, but it was funny. And I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I was it, like, are you Italian? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm half Italian. I was if like, you cool. ask your white bro about like, hey, what do you think about the difference between Scottish and Irish people? They might have opinions on that. Whereas an Asian would not. I do think white people on the East coast are a little bit more old school and more tapped into the Euro heritage. Yeah. yeah. They're more into the U European heritage. So they have more opinions about that. For example, Andrew, somebody like Joe Rogan literally looks Sicilian, but he more has said sort of jokingly that he identifies with his Irish side. Cause he more identifies as like a firefighter, you know, mm. good blue collar civil service worker. Point number two, Andrew, I think that there's so many white people in America and they identify with different archetypes in their community in terms of their own self-identity and how they relate to what it means to be white. Mm. For example, Andrew, there's people who identify as a conqueror. We came to America and we conquered it and we built this civilization. We did that. Mm -hmm. That would be Matt Walsh, Daniel Reed Crenshaw, Majorie Green, I mean, to Megan McCain. Like these people are like, I'm a conqueror. Now, how does this transfer over to a white girl, for example, that is uh, you're trying to date in college? She could be either raised like this, her parents could be like this, or date guys who are of the conqueror. I mean, mindset. you would say like if a white woman comes from a super alpha white family where maybe some of her parents or her dad is somewhat racist, or they're or they've said racial things around the house and they're rich, maybe less likely to date an Asian guy. Less likely. Not saying it hasn't happened, but less likely. I would say so for sure. Uh, less likely probability-wise. Number two, Andrew, there's a conqueror, but with compassion. So it's almost like, yeah, we conquered things, but we're nice now. So you mean maybe like white women from well-off families, but are like clearly Democrat families, like right. liberal families. Right, right, right. And like I said, like even David Pakman, if you look at his story, like he's from like a white or like a white European Jewish group that sort of like is considered the elite of a South American country. So he's very compassionate, but his people are still like the rich people of that country. Mm -hmm. um, David Brooks, I don't know. Yeah, he's more conservative, but like Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Susanna Gibson, Andrew, Jeannie Buss. Mm -hmm. Jeannie Buss got to fit in this category. Right, right, Because she's right. like about being alpha and running things, but running things in a nice way. Kelly Reaper, I don't mm. know. I don't even know her politics, but it just feels like it. Um, Andrew, non-conqueror, but still alpha. There is a Russian conservative um, girl named Misha Petrov right now who is very alpha about being white, but she also says, by the way, my people who are Russian had nothing to do with slavery or any sort of terrible things that happened. 
So there, she's almost like alpha, but like in a non-conqueror mm -hmm. way. And then, uh, but I guess Russians were conquerors too, but just not of America. And then of course, non-conqueror, but more neutral or quote unquote beta about it. I guess a lot of Scandinavian people that we were raised with in Seattle are kind of like this. Yeah. I mean, I would say like From Danish Iceland women, skin. Icelandic people, uh, Norwegian, or maybe like blonde Eastern Europeans who have that look, but really don't fully identify with the Anglo-Saxon. And know? they don't identify as colonizers globally. Mm. Yep. They just stayed in Scandinavia. Yep. Point number three, Andrew, there is a difference between a white person who is not exposed to things and there's a difference between a white person who is simply just not open to things. Mm. And then I would also add on to that, there's a difference between people who are actually against Asians. So I think as uh, as far as like white people, or let's just say white women in this term because this video is about dating right, white right, women right. and that's the topic at hand. It's like you would want at least to meet a white woman who is not against Asians. If they're against Asians forget it like may you know but that's crazy but if they're just not exposed that's fine because All then right. maybe they just didn't grow up around any asians or they didn't have a good chance at meeting in a formidable asian man you know what i mean i don't think it's wrong necessarily if a white woman wants to go to asian fusion spots that are more catered to english speakers because that's just her entry point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't, some, some of them want to go all the way in the deep end though, yeah. two feet in. No. And, and you know, I would bring up Abby Rao again from Rice Gum's ex-girlfriend who maybe, I'm pretty sure Rice Gum was probably the first Asian guy she ever dated, but he's also the richest and tallest and most famous guy she, she had dated up until now she's in the influencer Hollywood circles. But I'm saying coming from Louisiana, she probably just was not exposed to Asians. So then she meets this tall, well-off, cool Asian guy, and it's almost like, hey, there's now she knows that there's tall, cool, well-off Asian guys, and now she just, that's, she doesn't have a negative perception of Asians. Right, right, right. So I think it's pretty variable for white women, I'd say. You know what I notice is a lot of Latina girls, they don't necessarily know a lot about Asian culture, but they're open to it. Mm. That's what I think. That, that, I agree, I agree. Point number four, I think, think that how you physically look as an Asian dude impacts the type of white girl that you date because I do think that white women are more oriented to like Western features or to see I don't want to say white features on a guy but definitely guys yeah. who look like an Asian version of a white guy that they were right date. yeah no, no no I mean it makes sense so visually if an Asian guy has more Western features or appears to be more having that Western vibe. I'm saying I think it could be a look and a vibe. Um, so, for example, what Kevin Kreider, Daniel Wu, they look Western. Both those guys have been asked if they're mixed, even though they're full Asian. Yeah, these are full Asian guys who essentially are hot and look like can can appeal to all different types of women. Right, but then there's a very Asian look that could be considered very good looking in the Asian world, but I think more of the e-girls or the Korea boos would like it, right? Right, right. These guys, Aaron Yu, and then there's this streamer here. I think he's Japanese, and uh, he looks very Asian. Like, he's good-looking and cute, you know, in that Asian way, though. Uh, even to show you a personal example of myself, uh, I have this picture here where I look more Asian-centric. Like, first of all, I'm not even saying that was the best haircut at the time, but I'm saying I look like I only date Asian women in this photo, right? You look like you might only speak an Asian language. Oh, my goodness. Yes. No, exactly, to be honest. And then this next photo that is more recent where my vibe is just different, my haircut's different, I have some facial hair, you know, I'm showing some muscles. This is gonna appeal more to a mass American audience and right. more white women than my previous Especially photo. Especially if, I'm not saying you're holding a Paps blue ribbon in your hand, but oh. if you were, that'd be more points. Oh, it was a DC, it was a I Diet mean, Coke. I think it's even true for um, African Americans, because if you look at Michael B. Jordan, maybe some more Western features here, and then uh, Adwele, Who's, they're both considered good-looking black men, but one is going to appeal more to white women because it looks yeah. like more, I don't know, more mixed with white or just more Western, right? Yeah. Um, point number five, decision. Um, the decision that you might have to make if you date a white girl is, are you going to fit in with the white culture or bring her towards the Asian culture in your friends, assuming that you're one of the Asians that's more in the Asian world? Mm. What do you think about this? Because obviously this goes for dating any type of non-Asian girl, right? You yeah. can either enter her community's world. Let's say you dated a Dominican girl. You go uptown. You could go hang out in that yeah. world or you could bring her to her your world. Yeah, I've seen different uh, situations. I'm not going to say that every man pulls the woman more into their world because 
First of all, the Asian guys I know who date white women in New York that have incorporated them into the Asian scene, I know them because if they're an Asian guy who went into the white scene, I probably don't even know them. You but know what I mean? Which there is, but you, yes. they're not even they're a not, friend of a friend. Yeah, yeah, they're not in my circles personally, you know? So I've seen white girls or white women or American women in the, our circles, uh, in our exterior circles, but I do think that they're there mostly for the guy and maybe even after they break up, they may or may not stay, but I really don't think it's a guarantee that they stay around the Asians afterwards. Right. Um, is Nobu or Hakkasan sort of like a middle space? Is that a, is that is that a compromise if you go to you know like the fusion spots because that's I, like I would, I it's would say, Asian food but it's like catered for Western. I'd say a lot of those white girls who date Asian guys that are part of the Asian circles they're down for like Chinatown once a month or something like you know they still want to experience that. But you got to take them to the nice spot in Chinatown. I'm not taking Maybe. them to the to the Asian hood. Maybe you don't know you don't date one. It depends, man. It depends. Yeah, it, it depends if we're talking about like a Obama's mom type or are we talking about more you know. It depends on they the type just of making a stretch for themselves. Depends on the type of white woman. Um, point number six: being uh, appealing or fitting in. It still depend, depends on the cultures you hold because a lot of guys were saying if they you want to date white girls, you want to wear Brooks Brothers, Vineyard Vines, J Crew, and look like you're wearing old money Americana, but you just happen to be Asian. Man, it depends on what type of white woman you want to date. That's why we had the whole list in the beginning. Is because first of all, not every Asian guy just can choose and has that option. So sometimes you kind of got to be born into it. If you're taller and more muscular. You're if you went to like East Coast, bo East Coast boarding school, then you can pull off the J. Crew Americana look. Yeah, for sure. And, but if you're like just deep in the Asian gamer, e-girl world, like AZN world, and then you're like, well, I want to go date some Bickies and Stacys. From old money. That ain't even going to make any sense. It does right. not make sense. I, I think that uh, on a this is on a deeper level. This is not just clothing and like the school, high schools or middle schools you went to. I think that Filipinos have an easier time dating white women possibly because of being heavily Christian and Catholic, right? Uh, for example, like if you come from a very Buddhist, Taoist, atheist, Asian background, that'll be at odds. Uh, and not just from a religious standpoint, because not everybody's like religiously tapped in like that, but just like consuming content, music, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I've seen, but also one point that I want to add on to my Filipino friends that have dated white women, I feel like if they're a Filipino person, dude, that has like a really big family and always has like fun things do, that they do with their family. Pack like, Google Calendar. Like, like barbecues and stuff like that. That really adds to that girl's life. Like if that girl's family is not as well organized and doesn't have all those things and she's incorporated into the Filipino family, then it's still fun for her. So having a fun family or just a fun social system, even if it's kind of Asian still really benefits you as a guy that allows you to bring in women into your system and have them enjoy it. But if you have less of a fun social system than her, then you will have to be incorporated into her system. Right. Because it'll be clear that she has the better system. Yes. And uh, girls love plans, man. You know how guys is only fans. Girls are only plans. Uh, point number seven, who really cares? Race doesn't really mean everything, but it does change some probabilities. Um, Andrew, what is this? Race is still connected to culture and cultural space and access to certain lifestyles. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that, first of all, you can live a fine life being an Asian person, but uh, I can't lie that growing up in America, you don't feel, especially if you're able to date a socialized, popular white person. Are, are, you, are you referring to what the original poster is saying, like a sorority girl? Yeah, like, like uh, let's just say from a guy's perspective, you're able to date a Stacey and a Becky, a popular girl, and you get in those circles. That may validate you as an American. It may make you feel subconsciously. Like, not that you're trying to be white, but you can't lie that you don't feel some type of validation. I mean, listen, we know plenty of uh, famous black male athletes and actors who, who marry white women all the time, and, and they're rich. You know what I mean? So, obviously... We understand that white people in America, men and women, are still extremely appealing because of the perceived cultural space that they have. As the dominant yes. race now, of the culture. Now, there right? are other races of people that can live great lives and still obtain those spaces and are still live a fun life. I mean, but in, Not in the white spaces, in their own spaces yeah, they create. But, right? but if you do value... Deep down, you have to ask yourself, do you value those white systems in those white spaces? Well, that's why, that's why a lot right. of Asian actresses who go into Hollywood, they end up dating white or non-Asian people is because that's who 
is running that system. Yeah, I think even Lupita Nyong'o dates a white guy. Yeah, it's not, it's it's not like, crazy. Uh, uh, it's almost like, yeah, you know, I went to UCLA to study as a computer science major, but once I dated Becky, I was able to go to the tailgate for UCLA football, UCLA basketball games. <laughs> Come, do they talk like that, the ones who date Becky? Probably not. Right. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that, you know, um, yeah, it is. I, I could see, I guess what I'm saying is like, who cares in the sense of like, do you want that? Yeah. Because if you want that, then that's a way to get it. In the Dating word. a white girl is a way to, into that system in those worlds that you value or you want validation from or you want exposure to. But if you don't value it, then why make it such a big deal? In the words of our father, who cares? David, who cares? What do you mean? Date a white girl. You want to date a Becky right. or a Stacy? Who cares? Why do You're you want to man? date a NYC influencer? Her parents own 11 properties, three companies. And you it's like... To- you want to date a girl from Long Island date, or or Orange County. You want to date a girl from the Valley. Who cares? Right, right, right. And also, it's just like, man, like, is it to be a part of American culture? Because I remember I briefly went on a few dates with an, uh, like a Milan Italian girl in Shanghai, and she was there studying Mandarin. And it was kind of like, does that count? Am I like part, is that a Becky or a Stacy, or is that more like a Carmella? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, That's like I didn't European gain any access version. to the white mainstream by dating a girl from Milan. Yeah, it's just, I mean, if you're in a country or in America, you're talking about American white. If you're overseas in Europe or Asia, you're talking about Euro. It, that was a Euro. Maybe you valued her Europeanness, to be honest. I always knew I had a taste for stracciatella after that. Um, hey, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, yes, Asian guys got to be seen in public with hot white girls to get Asian girls back for decades of disrespect and throwing it in our faces. All right, David, what do you think <laughs> about the Asian guys who just hang out with white girls and are friends with them? And get but, friend zoned? But are not necessarily dating them, but are seen out with the hot white girls. Do you think that still benefits the image of Asian men? Uh... It's as messed up as it is. If I was to analyze it like I was a purple, green, iridescent alien, yes, probably. Mm. But for a dude, I'd question, What are, are you just in the friend zone trying to get in the end zone, but you're frozen in limbo? Um, somebody said yawns and Latina. Of course, there was a bunch of comments of guys being like, dude, just go with Latinas. Yeah, I mean, that's they're honestly, if they speak another language or their parents speak another language, they're probably more open-minded. That's just a fact. I agree. I'll just move on. Um, Euro women are open-minded, but they want to always try the version that's catered to them. Whereas my impression of white Americans is they don't actually like the food itself. They're all about the vibe. So basically, if you're dating a European girl or girl whose parents or grandparents are from Europe, she might want to go with you as an Asian guy to go try food. But for girls, uh, white American girls, they're just looking for you to show them a really dope new vibe. Interesting. Yeah, I do think this, listen, if you're an Asian guy and you got a cool vibe and you got things to offer and a fun life and an interesting life and you're American, I do think dating white women, especially in 2024, is totally available. Now, I do agree with that, though. European women are more into, like, culinary tastes than maybe even uh, American white women. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I I just think Americans are not that into food. Well, if you're a European immigrant yourself, you're probably more interested in trying new foods, you know, and and you... Uh, usually the Eastern Europeans, they're more tapped into ancient Eastern history a little bit more. While I would say really in the West, in America, they don't give a F about Eastern history. Like even if you got the Eastern history, don't even bring it up. Well, they don't even care about their own history. It's just about what you bring into the table at that moment and how that makes her feel. Right. Uh, This guy just said, you know, honestly... I think the biggest, pro, there's a bunch of pros and cons, but the biggest pro is just feeling cooler for your status or ego boost. Hey man, that's a real honest <laughs> comment. That's an honest comment. I don't, you know, I don't think that's how you should live your life into your later years, but all honestly, that is a very he honest He said comment. as an Asian guy who showed up with a blonde chick who is a 7.5 out of 10, every guy at the bar was dapping me up all night. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. tell me why. I could totally, depending on the town it's in, I could totally imagine this happening. 
Uh, who were the guys that were dapping on? Was it other white guys or was it like other ethnic guys? Maybe it could be both. I don't know. Anyways, uh, tell me why I could imagine though. I could imagine it going downside too, but more in the back in the yeah. days. Listen, been more hostile. listen, that's called a trophy, by the way. I believe that's the term trophy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, good for you. Listen, man, if you could do it, uh, sure. Go right, and do right, it, right. right. Ultimately, I'll say this, man, for sure. Different archetypes of people are different. I don't think that that's, uh, really crazy thing to say logically you see different pairings of archetypes all the time why does when a girl looks like a kardashian she is usually with some superstar black guy mm. that's like a very very common pairing you can see it in a lot of different industries why does it this this match with this 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 i mean you're just but leave some of the common archetype pairings in the comment section below but i'll say this man if you are an asian guy and you want something you just got to think about what you can realistically pull off and embody i wouldn't try to pull a 180 you know what I mean? And, and flip the other direction, but 90 degree angle shift, you know, mm. something that's close to you, but a little bit over shoot that gap. If you really, if that's what you want, I wouldn't triangulate my whole self trying to get a, a type of girl like a Becky or a Stacy to date me though. That okay. seems like you're centering it too much and basing your whole life around something when that life, that, that, that other party is not basing their life around you. Yeah. It's kind of stupid to chase it. Uh, for sure. But I guess maybe some dudes feel like, well, if I chase the Beckys and I shoot for the moon and fall on the clouds and I still get something. <laughs> right, I become really Americanized and all the American business people want to do business with me to make more money. Anyways, guys, let us know what you think about this post and our breakdown of the different types of white women who date Asian guys and the things you need to keep in mind about, you know, white people, guys. Uh, I and hope. if you're white, let us know in the comment section below. Did you think the analysis was good? Yeah, because listen, we're not saying you're a monolith. I really don't think white people are a monolith. Yes, sometimes you have to say the phrase white people, but I don't really, you know, you gotta, it's better to specify. Anyways, guys, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that super thanks button at the bottom and uh, support us. And thank you so much. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.